Good morning, this is Kyle Vile coming at you with another video, Coffee and Jesus. Here we go. All right, I'm going to continue our study in John chapter 12. Um, I left off in John chapter 11, so we're going to finish that right now. Now, Jesus just raised Lazarus from the dead after he was in the burial for four days. So four days. Now, I didn't mention this, but in the, the Jewish people actually believed that after three days or four days, that a person's spirit is gone, that it would sit inside the body for a few days, and then that it would be gone after that. But Jesus was actually countering that belief system in that day. So anyways, John 11, uh, verse 45, from that day forward, many of those who had come to visit Mary believed in him, for they had seen with their own eyes this amazing miracle. But a few went back to inform the Pharisees about what Jesus had done. So the Pharisees and the chief priests called a special meeting of the high council and said, so what are we going to do about this man? Look at all the great miracles he's performing. If we allow him to continue like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will take action and destroy both our country and our people. You got to notice and discern where people's hearts are, where their intent is, what their agenda is. Now, Cephas, the high priest that year, spoke up and said, You don't understand a thing. Well, that was very conceited. Don't you realize we'd be much better off if this one man were to die for the people than for the whole nation to perish. So he, in his own eyes, he really believed that Jesus was a troublemaker, was stirring the nation, was deceiving them. He, they thought that their ways were the way. But notice this. This prophecy that Jesus was destined to die for the Jewish people didn't come from Cephas himself but he was moved by God to prophesy as a chief priest. So God is actually moving on Cephas, the high priest, but Cephas was still blind, but he prophesied about Jesus dying before a spiritual truth, not what he thought or what they thought. So this is, wasn't in their, their thoughts of what truly was happening in the spirit. Spiritually speaking, and this is what it says, And Jesus' death would not be for the Jewish people only, but to gather together God's children scattered around the world and unite them as one. So that was the spiritual truth. Cephas was casting a judgment, and he was uh, intended to do something evil. But even as Genesis, Genesis says, what, what they intended for evil, God meant for good. And this, is, this was God's salvation plan. So from that day on, they were committed to killing Jesus. For this reason, Jesus no longer went out in public among the Jews. So now Jesus is forced to go into privacy. But he went into the wilderness to a village called Ephraim, where he secluded himself with his disciples. Now, it's interesting. I think about, like, is this God's will? God's will. Uh, was for Jesus to perform these miracles, but then the religious system came uh, against him, and then he was forced into the wilderness and secluded with his disciples. So he wasn't totally alone. Now the time came for the Passover preparations. So it's coming soon uh, for his uh, crucifixion. And many from the countryside went to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the feast began. And all the people kept looking out for Jesus, expecting him to come to the city. They said to themselves while they waited in the temple courts, Do you think that he will dare come to the feast? So this was a daring venture, if we were to come to Jerusalem. For the leading priests and the Pharisees had given orders that they be informed immediately if anyone saw Jesus, so they could seize and arrest him. Okay, so that finished chapter 11. Now, John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover began, Jesus went back to Bethany, the town where he raised Lazarus from the dead. They had prepared a supper for Jesus. 
Martha served, and Lazarus and Mary were among those at the table. So Jesus uh, raised Lazarus from the dead. Now he's eating among uh, with them in fellowship. Mary picked up an alabaster jar filled with nearly a liter of extremely rare and costly perfume, the purest extract of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet. Looking at more details, nard is an extremely expensive perfume taken from the root and spike of the nard plant found in north northern India. So that was traded. Um, and it is also mentioned in Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and chapter 4. Also, uh, that, was, that um, fragrance or that oil, uh, as it says here, then uh, that oil was actually very costly, is supposedly... 300 silver coins of denarii so that would equal to a year's salary that was in that oil that's how much oil she used then she wiped them dry with her long hair and the fragrance of the costly oil filled the house but judas the locksmith or judas the iscariot simon's son the betrayer spoke up and said what a waste we could have sold this perfume for a fortune and given the money to the poor now, it's interesting that Judas, this is the guy that would betray Jesus. And he's saying, oh, what, we're wasting all this oil. We could use it to sell it. Well, it turns out, in fact, Jesus, Judas had no heart for the poor. So he was saying something that was not even part of his heart. He was actually, it was deception from the get-go. He only said this because he was a thief and in charge of the money case. He would steal money whenever he wanted from the funds given to support Jesus' ministry. So Judas actually took money from the money bag that was used for Jesus' ministry. Can we believe this? And I bet Jesus knew. This is interesting. Jesus said to Judas, leave her alone. She has saved it for the time of my burial. You'll always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. I always thought that was an interesting verse when I first read it. And that was a truth, and I, I was living in New York City at the time, and all I could see is homeless and poor all over the place. And I was like, okay, Jesus said it. That must be true. And it is true. You will always have the poor among you. And I wish we had a better system where we didn't have poor. But according to Jesus and even God in Deuteronomy, this is a reference to Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11, it says, for the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. So God actually stated to the Israelites way back in the day that you will always have the poor among you, and I command you to keep your hands open. And that's something that God is speaking to us today. Jesus even said that too, um, that you will always have the poor among you, um, but Jesus did receive that costly oil. Of course, Judas had the wrong wrong heart. Um, but Jesus received that because it was preparation for his burial about um, coming into this crucifixion. So that means if if Jesus was receiving this costly oil, uh, costly perfume, and not doing what Judas, Judas said to sell it uh, and to give it to the poor, there mu there was significance in that because that means to me that Jesus was very, very, very special. And that what was about to happen was very significant. When the word got out that Jesus was not far from Jerusalem, a large crowd came out to see him. And they also wanted to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. So news had gone all over. And that's what stirred up the religious people. They wanted to kill Jesus because he was stirring up trouble for their religious system, their power, um, and their authority, really. This prompted the chief priests to seal their plan to do away with both Jesus and Lazarus. So this man was raised from the dead, and now they wanted to kill him. Isn't that amazing? The footnote actually states here, Darkness has only one way to deal with the truth. Kill it. That's what the darkness wants to do, to kill the truth. For his miracle testimony was incontrovertible and was persuading many of the Jews living in Jerusalem to believe in Jesus. There was a movement happening. We need miracles like this. 
The next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the massive crowd gathered for the feast. So they took palm branches and went out to meet him. Everyone was shouting, Lord, be our Savior. Blessed is one, the one who comes to us sent from Jehovah God, the King of Israel. Now that was verse 13. Uh, and that's that's the famous, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written. I'm reading from the New King James now. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. This was, this was written in the Psalms, actually. Um, I wonder which Psalms it was. Uh, actually, it was Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9. You can check it out. Continuing, Therefore the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason the people also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing? Look, the world has gone after him. Now, this is an interesting point. I wonder which translation I want to read this from. Um, I like the Passion Translation. Now, there were a number of foreigners from among the nations who were worshippers at the feast. They went to Philip, who came from the village of Bethsaida in Galilee, and they asked him, Would you take us to see Jesus? We want to see him. So Philip went to find Andrew, and then they both went to inform Jesus. He re to, replied to them, Now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let me make this clear. So the people wanted one thing. Jesus is going a whole nother direction now. He's saying this. A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops into the ground and dies. Because then it sprouts and produces a great harvest of wheat, all because one grain died. So that's actually the Aramaic translation. If it dies, it will bring forth a great rebirth. Going back to... um. What Jesus said, uh, the footnote, the one grain is Jesus Christ, who will within days be offered as a sacrifice for sin on Calvary's cross. He will drop into the ground as a grain of wheat and bring forth a great harvest of seeds. So this is, so this is actually even our own dying process for us to produce fruit. We have to die to ourselves, and that's what Jesus did. Jesus says this, The person who loves his life and pampers himself will miss true life. But the one who detaches his life from this world and abandons himself to me will find true life and enjoy it forever. If you want to be my disciple, follow me and you'll go where I am going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, the Father will shower his favor upon your life. Even though I am torn within and my soul is in turmoil, I will not ask the Father to rescue me from this hour of trial. For I have come to fulfill my purpose, to offer myself to God. So, Father, bring glory to your name. Then suddenly a booming voice was heard from the sky. I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it through you again. So God speaks, the Father speaks, rips out the uh, heaven, rips, rips through the earthly realm, and speaks from heaven and, and says this. The audible voice of God startled the crowd standing nearby. Some thought it was only thunder, yet others said an angel just spoke to him. Then Jesus told them, The voice you heard was not for my benefit, but for yours, to help you believe. From this moment on, everything in this world is about to change, for the ruler of this dark world will be overthrown. So Jesus is overthrowing the dark ruler. And I will do this when I am lifted up off the ground, and when I draw the hearts of people to gather them to me. He said this to indicate that he would die by being lifted up on the cross. So I'm going to leave it from there. I hope this was informative and encouraging that Jesus did everything he could. Um, he dealt with religious people. He dealt with resistance. He still stayed on mission with, and did what God was telling him to do. Um, and they wanted to kill him for it. So if Jesus went through it, we're probably going to go through some stuff down here too. God bless you. Stay in there. Coffee and Jesus. Peace.